Okay, we should be back. Uh, sorry, that was weird. That was actually really weird. We, we should be. We should be back now. You should see it in a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's Eric's fault because he realized it's Archon base. Archon base, yeah. Uh, that, that was really strange, actually. So the lights flickered and my PC turned off. But Max PC, two PCs down, didn't. And my UPS didn't catch it. Like, I've got a UPS that's supposed to keep my PC on for, like, a minute. When it... lights flickered, my PC went out. And the others didn't. I don't know what to do about that. Like even summoning to me. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. It's weird. Protection on the power line oh, reacting to something? What is that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a good point. Because the UPS has got a built-in... Oh, what's the technical term for it? A surge protector. Yeah. But I thought it was supposed to... Well, not if there's a surge, no. That's, 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 that's the safety feature. Uh. Oh. Hey, everybody. Maybe Are I'll stop. Maybe, maybe I'll just get rid of the UPS. Never had that happen before. Well, I, I had a surge protector before, but anyway. Okay, we're I'm back. I'm never getting rid of my UPS. <laughs> I, I think I need a better one. This one lasts like a couple well, of seconds. How long have you had it? Not long. This battery does go out. No, I uh -oh. got it like two <laughs> weeks ago because I'd never had one before. Run a self-test and see what happens. Yeah, that's a lot of work. So I'll do it someday. Battery? It's only 450 watts or something. Oh. I bought a cheap one because I don't know if I needed it. And clearly it didn't help me now. Uh, okay, let's go back to this. What are Archon Station? Anyway, uh, it's really yeah. long, it's really big, and it's explorable. And hopefully, these things will be too. And yeah, and they're like they're putting. <laughs> I mean, uh, I uh, I no, I'm just gonna bail out. I'm gonna bail out completely. There's too many ways that can go wrong. Um, I. Uh... I really love how much work they're putting into the space stations in Pyro. It really gives you a feeling that there'll be a lot of explorable area in stations in Pyro. All these ruined and old decrepit uh, derelict stations. And um, I I think that there's a lot of gameplay potential there. Um, and a lot of death. <laughs> yeah, let's actually look at more Pyro. Explorable stations in systems... Uh, do you, how do you think they're going to be able to handle this? Because th there's going to be a finite amount, no matter how large the system is. At some point, they might well be tapped out. Do you think they're just going to say, like, okay, so there's always a station here, or in this zone, a station can spawn? And you know, what what kind of thing do you? How do you think they will handle that? If if uh, all, then they just leave it. I think the station. I think space stations will be persistent. Um. I think that other derelicts will be will come in and out and will probably be based on player battles and stuff like that. But um, I think that, that actual space stations will be persistent and uh, will be big. Um, not big, but they'll be like, um, yeah, like standard points of interest that uh, that are always there. Um, I, I'd imagine... Spawn... Sorry. I, I just, I'd imagine for space stations, like the... They've been talking a lot about how there are different, um, different, uh, not, not archaeological, um, anthropological, no, um, like building, building, <laughs> building design, uh, architectural, there are different architectural, um, like themes that they've got going uh, on. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. And I have a feeling that for each of those Arc... Architectural. Architectural theme. Oh my god. 
uh, for each of those different architectural themes, there will probably be between three and five like wealth levels for a space station. But the space station itself will always be there, right? So there will be a derelict version where the system has run out of money. And there will be a really pristine one where the system is doing really well and a bunch of stuff in between. And it'll be and standardized. And there'll be the hero stations that are that are at, that are actually distinct from the other ones. Yeah, but and that'll be standardized based on the architectural theme of the station. But the stations will always be, you know, wherever they are in orbit. That said, I think uh, CIG have to get a hundred systems into the game. Mm-hmm. When I said that we'd start up relay in a full again when i retired it wasn't really a joke because <laughs> they need to get a hundred systems in and one i i think at some point and this is i think we're probably maybe five even ten years away from this but i think at some point the stations are going to be owned and run and possibly even built by players not all of them, but no, not all I, of them. Think, I do think players, I have thought for a very long time that player space stations are going to be a thing, especially in those systems that, that are apparently coming that are empty when you yep. find them. Um, like, I, I really think that that is a great opportunity for them to just go, okay, the UE has given license to some corporations to make uh, space stations in this new system. Um, you can buy the license and then you can build a station and, you know, yep. you get what you get one of the L points of a planet and you can build it. You're like rest stop and then you can make money. And I can definitely see them doing that, it, but it will be, I agree. It'll be super long term. That's not a release thing. That's a, that's a, we've put in the, player space stations expansion <laughs> even with static uh npc stations lack of npc you know even with static derelict stations even once they've been cleared out they can still do stuff with them after a while they can say okay so because players at the moment can't take it over or players have taken it over this pirate group has moved in and are using it so we need someone to go in and clear them out things like that they could still use those oh, yeah. stations after initial whatever for new stories and new things the whole, the whole deal with the, the whole, their whole thing that they've been working on i think people kind of i don't know actually maybe they didn't but i the fact that they're working so hard and testing out dynamic events this early they're it's going to be a big deal for them and i think there, there's going to be a lot of dynamic events and that's one of the things uh you know like um a bunch of Space worms have infested this derelict, and you know you need to go in there and get rid of them if you want to loot the giant box of you know puppets or whatever. It's whether or not you want to open that kind of worms in the first place. <laughs> it's uh, it's all going to come down to the efficacy and the amount of stuff that they can put into their procedural generation software because they've already been procedurally generating um, space stations and the layouts of space stations yep. well if they can generate the layout and generate all the shops in it then they can probably generate the shop the you know stuff for in those when those shops are gone and it's actually a derelict space station they can like it's all down. CIG have to really, really hone in their procedural generation tech, and they can't do it in a way like No Man's Sky did it, where they just free for all it. They have to do it a lot more controlled, but they still have to do it because there's such a massive, and this massive is massive game to fill. This is right up there, alley of what they were talking about too. They're like, so what we're gonna do is procedurally generate the layout. And then the interior, all the set dressings can be different. And that comes right down to, like, whether it's a brand new station or one that's, like, horribly wrecked. The layout can be the same, um, but all of the set dressing inside can be completely different and can fit whatever you want um, the gameplay goal to be there. You know? I, I, and I absolutely love the work they're doing on Pyro. It's just, it just looks great. 
a little shop with like the like pieces of metal just like bolted on and like there's an oven rack there i think that's part of the roof and like it's just a random shit i love it uh okay we're looking at now eris we're looking at uh garbage and uh detritus on pyro um Basically, they're they're doing all the set dressings to make stations on Pyro look run down and decrepit and disgusting, and it looks really good. Um, yep, these are all the little details in games that uh, that sometimes get overlooked, but really make the environment sell the environment. Yep, um, and the mood. Uh, let's actually look yeah. at. Like I think it, I think it could be funny to be an artist that does that. And, like, what do you do for a living? Oh, I make garbage. Yep. <laughs> I literal trash. Jared in this week's episode singled these trees out because he was like, mm -hmm. I like them, they're pretty, and I'm really glad because these trees make me happy. Yep. I want Why are you happy about these trees? I'm happy about these trees because I want larger foliage that is unique to star citizen. Like I, I think they've just used like speed tree or something for all of their, their trees that they have now. Like they're just generic trees. Not all of them, but, a lot Not of, all them. Of, them, but, but the large, I want to see more like this. Like th these are really branching out. Yeah. They, I want, I want them to branch out. I want them to turn over a new leaf. I want them to, you know, yeah. Yeah. You want, you want to see the tech blossom. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. I want really want to see what kind of a, a, a you know bite they can get behind their bark. Yeah, once they've got some root stuff in, they want to. Yeah. More. Yeah. Branch out. Yeah. 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 I twig. I twig. <sighs> um, I really like that they have the the various um, sizes too of, of the their plants, and they're creating some variation in there too. Um, it does open up the possibility for, for morphing between them and having, like, growing plants, yeah. um, which I think is a really cool idea. And you're going to need it anyway for agriculture because they apparently decided they're going to do it. Yeah. So <laughs> made their own lives difficult. I mean, it, they, they've made their own lives difficult when they said we're going to have 100 systems. <laughs> and it's like, oh, how different is the uh, environment going to be? How many are we going to see? Is this tree something that only occurs on this planet or in this system how are they because they've already they've already they've, they've already did they've done already that. fixed it they already fixed yeah. it in the lore because they they basically said that all the planets that are terraformed they basically had to erase everything that was on them to terraform them uh, and so they've reseeded them with this like set of yeah. things so they it, don't have to they don't have to be. They don't have to make it as broad as it might otherwise be. You know, they don't have to be like, oh, we have to make up like two hundred different biospheres, <laughs> which would be yeah. horrible. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm. They can again. They can. Once they get further along with it, they can also use procedural generation to help with that, as well. Yeah. Right, because they will be able to possibly yep. make small alterations to existing stuff like mm -hmm. they'll get there but the yes this planet was terraformed therefore it is standard planet is going to help them it really will and it will allow them to keep it to like less than 10,000 different plants you know <laughs> and and it and it makes sense i mean yep. that is 100% what we would do uh, oh, and oh, and actually, if it's we're, what if we're gonna if we're gonna erase the biosphere of a planet and terraform it. Well, we're terraforming it. That's we, what the word means. They we're making it like Earth. But it's what we it's what we have already been doing on Earth for generations. Mm -hmm. Why do any of the crops that you eat look the way you do? And what happened to the crops that we just determined were Why? not as valuable? <laughs> Guess what? Totally. Why is wheat the single most successful organism on the planet? <laughs> We like to eat. I would still terraform every planet to be suitable for hedgehogs, and then just agreed hedgehogs yeah. across the galaxy. Why are carrots the orange? Is, then, you get, then you get mutated space hedgehogs, and they start throwing spines at you, and they and, turn blue, um, and they run really fast, 
And uh, the man, you know, you know what I think one of the best things to come out of the Sonic the Hedgehog was. What's that? And I know it didn't come out of Sonic the Hedgehog, but it's where I learned of its existence. So, to me, Sonic the Hedgehog is the reason that I know that these exist. Chili dogs. Chili dogs are one of the best damn things on the planet. I learned I about. I've had chili dogs in the states. Shiver. How did you? How did you miss that? What do you mean, miss that? I grew up watching Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, <laughs> so to me, Sonic the Hedgehog is the genesis of chili dogs. Chili dogs are legitimately amazing. Uh, Carbide Edge, I also grew up with Roadrunner, but Roadrunner didn't, didn't introduce me to chili dogs. Sonic did that, so... Yeah. Uh, funnily, funnily, were a great way of life. Funny enough, Harold, um, uh, Cass and I, we don't have a kitchen this week. Our kitchen has been entirely torn out because we're putting in a new kitchen. Uh, so we've been getting a lot of takeout. And yep. this week for takeout, I got myself a chili dog and chili cheese fries. And Cass wow. got herself a poutine dog and a poutine. Wow, that's very, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. That sounds amazing. It was, oh, I love it. I want to make chili some chili. Chili cheese fries are also amazing. Yes. Chili uh, makes anything good. I love chili so much. I mean, I need to make some chili. Is that good food? Because I can't see it. That's chili cheese fries. Oh, Ooh, delicious. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. We got, I think we got one more thing. One more video. Perfect. Derelict Outposts. This I'm excited. For. Like, yeah, there's so much they can no, do. There's, game there's two more because we haven't seen the we haven't seen the the not derelict outposts. Oh yeah, sorry, I've done things out of order. Um, yeah, there's so much potential for gameplay in derelict outposts, and I'm really excited for it. Yep. Yeah. Well, and ruins are so ruins are such a like standard in the game industry for places to explore. Yeah, um, I I love seeing them do this. I love the tree growing in the middle of the ruined um, outpost. That's so cool, and the vines growing up the walls. Oh, great! Any thoughts, Shiver? Yeah, um, smoked brisket chili cheese fries. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my. Uh, I also have thoughts, and I, I know I just typed them, but um, oh my God. for uh, it to be real poutine, yeah. Harold, uh, Harold, for it to be real poutine, make sure that they, they make it with cheese curds, because otherwise it's not yeah. legit poutine. But if it is with cheese curds, then you you do have to try it, because poutine really is one of the Maybe. best one of the best dishes on the planet. It, I mean, it's not healthy in any way, no. but it's good. Yeah, uh, sorry. Go ahead, Shiver. You were you were actually talking yeah, about these outposts. It's, it's another one of those ones where it's they're just able to add a story just with these ruins. Just that on its own, and you can have a look around. You can form your own story. And I'm wondering whether or not things like this are going to be stuff that I can, as a player, recycle, remake from. It's like okay, so this outpost failed. Maybe I can make my own here. What kind of things are they going to put in there? How long has this outpost been abandoned to have a massive tree growing through the middle of it? It looks also looks a bit portly. <laughs> yeah. I really like it. I, you actually just gave me a thought there, Shiver, because, um, and I'm, I'm going to bring this back to a game that most people hate, but I don't care. I really liked uh, Fallout 76. When Fallout 76 came out, everyone was like, how can you do a Fallout game without human characters to interact with this is madness and to some point to some extent fine i get it hello mud trucker oh, oh god oh one second here we go i can do it for you <laughs> that's the bonus whenever you subscribe oh. you cause eris physical oh. pain. um i i do oh. i do 
have a lot of sympathy for you there, David. I did the the well, mine was actually scraping a ceiling rather than painting it. But working with your arm over your head for hours and hours and hours and hours is brutal. I had to do electrical I and had... then I mudded and painted and I'm just dead. Oh, terrible. I had a three day long migraine because of oh. my neck and shoulder. And all I did was sleep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, for, right. Fallout 76. I actually had some of my favorite stories that I've had in a Fallout game in Fallout 76 told entirely through audio logs and data pads found in mm -hmm. ruins, right? No human characters required. You find a ruin, you start exploring, you and you start hearing these stories about the people that lived in it and what happened and what did they do after the bombs dropped and how did they survive and how, right? I thought that was really, really interesting. And to me, these derelicts, and I hope CIG do something like this, but derelicts like this are a phenomenal opportunity for exactly that storytelling. They've already done that. Yeah, but do really it cool. more. I, I want. Oh like, no, that's... no, no! I just, I just wanted to put, I, I just wanted to point out. There's a good chance they will continue yeah. down that road because that first ruined station, the the cargo yes. station, um, had data pads in it that, that had it on audio log and they yep. told the story it was really cool complex yeah that was a complex yeah. one yeah like i i want that in these ruined outposts i want to know you know who whose outpost was it what were they doing there what were they trying to do and why did it fail and what happened to them i i love that sort of storytelling i think it can be I really love good. one i love one where the tree actually was the cause of the destruction of the outpost <laughs> We planted this tree. We didn't know it was a mutant tree. It killed everybody. And <laughs> and now it's going to kill you. <laughs> ah. Actually, that could be quite interesting. You know, something like that, where you do find this ruin and whatever it was that caused this is still right there. But by the time you discover that whatever caused this is that, you're fucked. And you've got to find a solution to it. Like a tree that is giving off these spores or blossoms that make you hallucinate and you're like oh shit i've got to find the cure for this before we go back and die because otherwise i'm not going to be able to come back here and find my own corpse later <laughs> of course sure look all i know one of the one of these the, the outpost look they called in a garbage a garbage truck unfortunately They uh, they got a garbage woman. <laughs> We've all been there. Uh, and then, okay, wait. There's one more where yep. they're not derelicts. Let me just. Oh wait. Well, this is uh, the this is the outpost one. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's hexagon. It's the, called. Um, it's called uh, hexagons, hexagons or bestagons. Yeah. The one I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Fuel storage. So and these lights. are all the bits and pieces for these are all the bits and pieces for the colonialism outposts that they're continuing to Be work right back. on. Not all of the bits and pieces, some of them. But they uh, they continue to look awesome, and I can't wait to see these in the game. Um, decorating planets more, it's going to be so cool. It, it's something they've really got down to a T, is the look of an industrial feel, an, an agricultural feel, a scientific feel. Even though it is meant to be distant, far future, you can instantly look at that, and you may not be able to guess fuel storage pods, but you go, that's something industrial. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I really love, even with their current outposts, you walk into some of them, and you're like, oh, this one's got all the lab equipment, so I got like, the microscopes and everything. They have the big, uh, some of them have the big... Um, um, uh, circular plant growers along the walls, and uh, yeah, they were yeah. The aeroponic really bays. Cool. Yeah, hydroponic bays, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, well, you um, see the difference there. Hydroponic merely means without soil; it could still have a growing medium, whereas aeroponics means it's just growing in midair without any kind of medium. Thank you very much, Shimmer. 
Now I've learned. You're very welcome, darling. I love the oldie looking style lights. I, and you know what's funny is is I think is probably like the like right now you have in modern day you have all of these uh, vintage looking lights that people make, um, and I'm sure that that's what those are too. <laughs> in 900 years from now, people are like, I want I want a light, but I want it to look like it's a thousand years old. <laughs> It's just opening up so many possibilities, isn't it? Because you, you could make your own industrial-based estate. You've got your friends who are bringing in fuel from the Star Fairer who might be out and about mining for the fuel. You can have your own agricultural base. But, of course, we all know that the best place to get your agricultural stuff will be on Eris's Endeavor when he's not looking and so on. It, I like the depth to things like that because it's not just limiting you to say... Agriculture can only be done by NPCs on the planet or you and your endeavor. You'll be able to do something with a plot of land somewhere. Yep. Well, and that's, and that's one of the interesting I, things. I love, the, I love them showing greenhouses, too, because that opens yeah. it up a lot. Because then you don't need to have arable land anymore. You just need to have a spot of land somewhere. And then you can build a greenhouse and you can make it work. And and that's throwing that's that's been one of the really interesting things about the development of Star Citizen because you look at where it started and it was yet yeah, we're gonna have you know a dozen ships and single player and multiplayer and then they added more ships and then they added the reclaimer and it's like oh we're gonna get salvage like refueling fine whatever but we're gonna be able to take things apart and then they added more and they and 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 it's always been a like as they keep adding it's always we want you to be able to do everything right they add the endeavor and the endeavor is yeah you can do everything there is everything. to do and the and, and one the of the one of the things well, the, about the hope, there, there are other games where they're like, sorry, but okay. there are other games where it's like, yeah, and you can do salvaging here and you can do construction there, but it's it's also it's it's very limited scope. It basically comes down to highlight area, press F, bump. They're trying to bring it in so it's like you can literally build this thing. You got to go and gather the materials, put it in place. Then you got to grow the thing. It's that extra extra step that I think I think the depth to all of the game mechanics. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's going to be really interesting to see how base building is going to end up working. We know that mm -hmm. it's going to right. There's there is a ship dedicated to it. We don't know how it's going to work yet. Um, probably going to be select assets to place down, and they get placed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much more. Like I don't think they're going to be going with like a fallout for you build the individual walls to your base, but you could find a spot on a moon and build a giant hydroponic empire that, you know, you sell plants from because those yep, will be you needed can grow in space the economy. Drugs. Yeah. <laughs> or just food. Cause presumably yep. look, there's pizza on space stations. Well, guess what? That pizza probably needs to be made using wheat. And that means that somewhere that wheat has to be grown because like it's just it's all that level of just absolute bloody insanity because Chris was like, no, we're gonna do everything. <laughs> and repeatedly over the last like ten years. No, we're doing it all. Take it Star it Citizen up. has been Star Citizen has been in development for as long as I've had my my job. Yep. Ten years. Nuts. Not quite, but we're getting there. Yeah. You can make a solid argument for it by the end of the year. Yep. Um, I just like to think that Pioneer is going to be this huge, huge 3D printer, and you'll be able to hear it miles away just going, meh. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope so. That'd be good. Totally. That would be so cool. Yeah, the the interesting thing is if it is a three D printer that would allow them allow you to do what I what I think would be really cool is if you had like a holographic interface, 
and you could like use it do like a, a total base planning thing and you'd be like i'll put this here put this here put yeah. this here put this here and i'm going to connect them all this way and this is the only way the electrical system is and then you just tell it to do it and it would it, like 3d it goes through and does face. it yeah it yeah. would be so cool um but i don't know how it's going to work um I also think it's going to be really funny. You build out the base and then it comes up with like the resource cost and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> I need to put out a few uh, beacons here. Um, yeah. Please please uh, deliver all of the resources of this entire system well, um, <laughs> to my location. And, and I'm interested to see actually because thinking about it, I think there's what? Maybe, I think there's Three. There are three, um, uh, like gameplay loops, career paths that I can think of right now that only have one size of ship. The Starfarer is the only refueling ship. Yep. Mm, kind of. There's the what? Which ship is the the refueling Vulcan. and rearming ship? The, well, and I was Vulcan, gonna say yeah. that the Vulcan is the only like repair and overhaul ship. Uh, Crucible. No, it's not. Crucible. Right, crucible. Never mind. Okay, two. Um, uh, the Odyssey doesn't count as a refueling ship because it only can only fuel itself. Yeah. Um, but the only the only base building ship that we have seen is the Pioneer, and it is mm -hmm. massive. It's a massive, massive ship, and I do wonder if there's going to be a smaller base building ship that can do smaller buildings like i, I is that going to be something where there's multiple sizes or if you want to build a base do you have to call in a pioneer to do it or i wonder if the pioneer is the small one <laughs> it's like gigantic like massive ships that could come in you know like what if, like what ret if retribution not, size ship. ships what, what, what if that? it's going to yeah. be ground vehicles? Could it could be? Ooh, that's an interesting thought. Though you'd oh, have you to be able to get it to the planet, them? so it would have to fit on something. So like... you'd need some sort of ship that was specialized in transporting other vehicles, you say? Yeah, but not a military-based one, because the Hercules, Hercules is pretty huge. Hercules and you can could drive do it. through it, and it can do what three tanks, so you could fit something pretty big in there. Hercules, break it up, put it on a hull. <laughs> I I don't think the Liberator would do it because the Liberator is strictly for combat operations. It's like the Liberator is it the. Have, I mean, it doesn't have to be. If the player says yes, stick your several <laughs> cranes on the Liberator and I'll yeah. just drop them off. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, I like these ideas. I mean, but I wonder if it fits. Even, it, would you necessarily need anything? else other than a pioneer because if it was that small of a building wouldn't you be able to build it by hand or grab porch or porch grab i don't know um beam you know they, they, they've got a lot of options because it, it really depends on how they want to do it because they could always just say you can just build it with a uh, hand if it's small enough well you i can use tools you could use a crane i wonder mm -hmm. We sort of know how salvage... Well, we know how salvage is going to work, sort of. And we sort of know how repair is going to work. Right? It's basically going to be the opposite of the damage. Like, damage getting done to your ship by being shot. One one type of repairing, yes. One type of repairing. But I, I kind of wonder, actually, when you place down a building, will it place down, like, the wireframe? And then you could go with a hand thing and, like, slowly paint on the finished uh i, I don't, don't know. i mean that doesn't seem that useful multi-tool like base building annoying. i don't i i don't know how they're gonna do it they, they have to make it more accessible than <laughs> yes i would like to build a base uh hello are there any pioneer owners out there three people yeah, I, mean, I know. The, I know. It's probably I as well sense. just got to be like, we want to keep this in mind, but for right now, let's not think about it. What I think they're going to do is, I think since they already have them, I think you're, the first step for base building is you're going to be able to just buy um, the modular uh, outposts, like the like the little ones, just yeah. the little like squares, 
and they'll have some ships that can just haul them like on the outside of the ship like just grapple onto them and haul them around and you can ask for that to be delivered to wherever your spot is um, yeah they, they have to that probably like step one of base building mud trucker they have to get those npcs working first though which they aren't yet well, but eventually, we'll, yes, we'll, the we'll nine to one. We're a very long way from any of the things we're talking about. By then, it's the NPCs be working great. <laughs> true. <laughs> By then, they'll have procedurally generated NPCs <laughs> that can procedurally generate the persistent universe. Excellent. Procedurally inside the persistent universe. All right. Uh, this is. And this then they'll be us... running their own Kickstarter campaign <laughs> in the persistent <laughs> universe. <laughs> this this is bringing us to the end of the show. Uh. Thank you all so much for watching us. Uh, Shiver, what do you got going on? This week is... Yeah, this week is just Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, we are carrying on uh, Nihon Nights, our modern-day V5 Chronicles set in Japan. Uh, it's It's been really good. Uh, if, you, if you want to check that out, go over to uh, twitch.tv slash table of horrors uh, coming up soon is more awesome, awesome. Uh, David what are you up to this week I'm building a kitchen uh, we might have a show Tuesday are you I getting don't know. pioneer in for that uh, yeah. yes yeah getting one getting it's uh, it's showing up Monday and it's just gonna 3d print my my new kitchen in the house Very it's nice. really impressive Very nice. um yeah we might have a show tuesday i don't know if it's gonna depend on how much there is to talk about and um i mean i know i haven't played anything but elden ring because elden ring um but this is uh, actually one risk of us not doing a show is i don't know if any of us will have played anything other than the things we played last week yeah um but we'll uh we always play it by ear and if anybody's feeling up to a show we usually do it because it's a lot of fun to hang out and talk about games. Yep. Um, uh, and so, uh, regardless, Trucker, we'll be back here right? next Saturday for more of this. So Mud Trucker asked for a Star Citizen funding update. So I thought I should uh, check in on that. So I didn't talk a lot about this, but um, once again, I know everybody thought 2020 was an aberration. 2022 is doing even better than 2021 was. Um, in fact, they are way ahead of any previous year in funding. I will get a, grab a quick screenshot and show you what I'm talking about. I, I genuinely um, want to know why anyone thought that 2021 was an aberration. It's almost like... No, when no, no, they... no, no, no. 2020 we thought was an aberration because, uh, because of COVID. Mm. And then 2021 destroyed it. And we're like, oh... <laughs> maybe not <laughs> it's look guess what happens when they've got a fairly impressive playable game well i don't know if they did back then i don't know if it was that uh, no 2020 wasn't bad um, 20, 2020 wasn't bad the, 2021 started to get good i think a lot of the momentum right now is because the game is very playable and yep. good um just a second here, folks. I'm just grabbing... Uh, I'm just uploading this image, and then I can share it with you, folks. Um, but uh, to, so we can at least uh, show you what I'm talking about. Um, but we're way ahead of any, of any previous year in terms of funding. There's the image up there. Um, they're... Yeah, wow. several million dollars ahead of where they were, uh, even in 2020, which was the strongest start to a year. Um, I'm going to say that this year they're going to get to 90. They might hit 100 if they if they really have mm. a good uh, uh, second half, which is amazing to me. Um, uh, yeah. Regardless, uh, the and the support for Star Citizen remains extremely strong. Um which is great for all of us. Um, I did want to mention we had uh, we did have um, a little glitch with the st with the funding spreadsheet a little while ago. Uh, thank you again to Corey Close, who is our guy.
guy who we contact every three years when the crowdfunding spreadsheet breaks and he fixes it again. Um, <laughs> I'm really glad he still is responding to my emails uh, from these years. <laughs> uh, but it's working great. And uh, yeah, um, we'll keep have checking you, on that. Go ahead. Have you never spoken to him like in real time or anything? Just Just email contact? That's kind of amazing. At one Who's point in time, <laughs> at one point in time, this guy offered to write an uh, an auto updating script for the the crowdfunding sheet, and I have never really talked to him a lot. And every once in a while, it breaks, and I email him, and he goes, "Okay, I'll fix it." And then he fixes it. <laughs> but it's like it, nice. there was, there was like nice three years between contacts most recently. Oh. That's there, there very are... nice. So there's a community yeah. between. Yeah random people in the star citizen community it's, it's and good thank people you to fastcart because me and fastcart are the ones who basically uh, keep that uh, that sheet up to date um and relevant uh but it uh keeps trucking along um of course we are now closing in on 450 million dollars in funding which we will probably hit um in april not bad all right well thank you all so much for coming out and watching us be ridiculous and uh tune in next week